In this video, we're going to look at what's different in recording studio signal flow from desktop music production signal flow. And there are some significant differences, and it's important just to get an overview first of what they are at that top level before we drill down into the details of how signal flows around a recording studio. So if we think about desktop music production, typically you're in the same room as the performer. In the studio, typically there's a separate control room and a live room, so you're operating in a different room to the performer, which means you need to have some sort of headphone and communication system going. In desktop, you've got an interface which has a mic preamp, headphone control that are located on the audio interface, and it's normally just one simple unit. In the studio, these are all separate devices or separate units, the mic preamps or could be a mixing console, um, the headphone system and the audio interfaces are all typically completely separate hardware units. On the desktop, you monitor on headphones when you're recording, which is normally from the interface itself. You may even be mixing and doing all of your work on headphones in a desktop situation. In the studio, you're typically monitoring in the control room on loudspeakers, on specialised studio monitors, sometimes several sets of them. And also when it comes to the musicians, they're usually listening on a dedicated and more sophisticated headphone system. In the desktop environment, there's normally only a pretty small number of inputs available. Although some interfaces do extend up to as many as 16 inputs, it's kind of rare in a home studio environment to see more than about eight inputs on an interface. In a studio environment, typically they're set up to deal with lots of different inputs, so full band recording. So it's not uncommon to see 24 or 32 inputs on studio based audio interfaces. In the desktop environment, most of the processing is usually done in software. In the studio environment, it's very common to also have a number of hardware processors that can be deployed in a mixing situation. Desktops therefore have restrictions on the scale of the recording that we can generally do. So typically when we're in a, a desktop environment, we're recording one instrument at once. It's very rare to be recording multiple performers or multiple instruments at once. And the setups are pretty simple. In the studio environment though, we're able to record fully scaled up bands. So multiple performers playing multiple instruments, very complex mic setups. And so studios are very much adapted for complex large scale recording. So there's no restrictions on the scale of the recordings that can be achieved in a studio environment where there are restrictions in desktop environments on the scale. Desktop environments are normally pretty standard for home facilities and obviously studio environments are specialised recording and production environments that are commercially based. So let's have a look at the signal flow. So if we're looking at desktop music production, the signal flow is pretty simple. So we generally have a microphone, which could be a dynamic or a condenser, and that will plug straight into an audio interface. Normally the audio interface has a dedicated or a built-in mic preamp that you can use on it. And then that audio interface is normally connected often via USB or some other connection standard to a computer which contains door software uh, and in this case we are using Pro Tools software. On the playback side then the door on the computer feeds an audio interface, the same interface that's used for the audio input and that interface has a built-in monitor controller that can drive either headphones or loudspeakers for our monitoring. So it's a pretty simple and direct setup for desktop music production. It typically only involves a computer running software and an audio interface and everything can be managed by a dedicated audio interface. When we look at studio music production though, it's a lot more complicated. The first thing, as I said in the intro, is that the producer is separated or the engineer is separated from the performers via a live room or a control room kind of setup. So if we think about signal flow from the performer through to the recording in a recording studio situation, then we have a mic that we would typically have in the live room that plugs into what's called the wall plate, which is a series of mic connectors on a wall in the live room, and that flows through a wall and arrives at a patch bay in the control room. We'll look at patch bays in more detail later on. 
The patch bay then feeds a mixing console which will have input channels on it which can train microphone preamps. And then the mixing console will also go back through a patch bay before it goes to dedicated audio interfaces which do not have preamps in them, they're just audio interfaces and they are attached to a computer running the door software. On the playback side in the studio, the door software plays out through a dedicated audio interface, which in a scaled up Pro Tools system will typically be Avid HDIO interfaces. And then it goes from there to a patch bay. And then from the patch bay, it goes back to the mixing console. Then the console will have a dedicated monitoring control section on it. And then that will feed what are called monitor outputs and the loudspeakers. Typically in a recording studio you will have multiple sets of loudspeakers or monitors. It's typical to see two, but sometimes there are three sets that you can use when you're monitoring. So this shows a diagrammatic overview of the recording studio, kind of like a bird's eye view of the whole setup. You can see the mixing console in purple there in the center and you will see the various connections drawn out around the key components of the recording studio. Notice that the analog audio connections are drawn in blue, computer cabling in green and digital audio sent via ethernet cables is drawn in red. You can see there at the top of the screen in blue the wall plate with the microphone ties 1 to 24 connecting through the patch bays into the mic line input on the mixing console and then once we have dealt with those signals, in other words amplified them in the mixing console they get sent back out the channel direct outputs to the patch bays and then into the audio interfaces on the computer where we are running Pro Tools software. You can see there also that the playback system from the computer runs through the audio interfaces and actually goes to the green monitor section of the Pro Tools into, in this case, the 2-Track 1, 2T1 return, which is the playback of Pro Tools, and then that is fed to the monitor loudspeakers in the studio. Notice also that we have a hearback headphone system. This is a particular brand of headphone system. It has analog audio inputs, but it then sends the audio through ethernet cables to what are called hearback pods, which I will describe in more detail later. It is kind of like a mix your own headphone system that we will have a look at in greater detail later on. But essentially that is a headphone system where you feed it analog audio inputs but it actually outputs ethernet digital audio to the headphone pods that are distributed around the recording space and used by the performers. So that's a conceptual diagram that you can refer to. It is quite helpful in visualising the various key connections that occur in the recording studio. This next slide is a simplified version of the signal flow on the record side in the recording studio from the microphone into Pro Tools software. I've omitted the patch bays from this just to make it simpler to understand. So we capture sound with microphones. Our microphone preamplifiers in this case are contained in the mixing console itself. So it'll be a channel input strip on the console. At the top of those strips there are microphone preamps. And that's where we add gain to the mic. We can give it phantom power. Uh, we will look at that in greater detail later. Essentially from the microphone input channel it goes to an output of that channel and that output feeds the audio interface on the computer and as we know we're using Pro Tools software so basically Pro Tools software is being used to record the signals that we are sending to the audio interface on the computer. So this is a simplified diagram of the main aspects of the input side to recording in the studio. Let's have a look at the audio interfaces now. So in a recording studio, we typically have a large number of inputs and outputs. In this case, you can see we have 32 inputs and outputs, and that is achieved by using two Avid HDIO interfaces that are stacked. So 
interface 1 handles inputs and outputs 1 to 16 and interface 2 handles inputs and outputs 17 to 32 and you can see that represented there on the labeling on the right hand side of the screen so these two audio interfaces operate in tandem and come together in software as 32 inputs and outputs although as we will see we use 24 inputs and 32 outputs on this system 24 inputs and outputs for the mixing console and eight outputs for the headphone system is how it works but we will look at that in greater detail a little bit later on so i wanted to take you through the input and the output side but this time put the patch bays into the picture so if we look on the left hand side in red that is representing if you like the record chain or the input side to Pro Tools and if you look on the right hand side of the screen you're looking at the output side or the playback side from Pro Tools to the monitor system. So first of all we take a microphone and we plug it into the wall plate that is in the live room and we're going to put it into input 1. So we will see arrows as I talk you through this flow of signal from source to destination. Once we've plugged into the wall plate, then we are connected through the wall to the patch bay that's in the control room. And so it appears as live room microphone one. So the microphone input one appears as live room microphone one on the patch bay. Now through a process called normaling, uh, and this is a feature of patch bays in which the top row is connected to the bottom row always, then that signal will be passed down to the bottom row, which is the console mic preamp input one. So that's an internal connection in the patch bay from the top row to the bottom row. So whatever we have on the top row will automatically be connected to the bottom row. So in this case, live room microphone one is automatically connected to console mic preamp input 1. So that means that that signal that we've plugged into wall plate 1 will also appear at the microphone preamp on the first channel of the console, so console mic preamp input 1. And on the screen there you can see the mic preamp. It's got a gain control, a trim control, a polarity flip, fan of power and an input selector and so on. And that's a normal connection as I say through the patch bay. So from the channel output, we then come back out through the patch bay, so console direct output one, and through this similarly normal connection, we will then arrive at HDX AD input one. So this will be the audio interface on the computer. We will be connected to input one because we have a normal connection from the console output channel one to audio input one on the audio interface. And from there, we can record into Pro Tools onto track one of the Pro Tools software. Okay, on the output side, if we look across to the right hand side, if we've recorded something on Pro Tools on input one, we then send it to our monitoring output one and two. And from that, we then go to the audio interface and then from the audio interface, we go to the console two track monitor input 2T1. And that is represented as a button or a source select on the monitoring section of the console. So that block that you can see on the right hand side there with the red volume control on it is the monitoring section of the console that we look at in great detail later on. So then we select two track one or 2T1 then the signal will be presented to the volume pot, the big red volume pot, and it will feed whatever monitors we choose from the monitoring section. So as I said earlier, we have a number. Uh, the ones that you're going to learn on are the Yamaha MSP5s, uh, which are the near field or the small monitors in there. So once we choose the correct monitors in this section, we then get signal coming out of the loudspeakers in the control room. So this seems a little bit complex at first because there are many, many stages to it. But basically, if you look carefully at this diagram, you will see all of the steps that are involved in the connection from the input to the output of Pro Tools. So from the record side to the playback side until you can hear a recording back on the monitors in the control room.